Hey there everybody, it is Marianne at Thrive and today I wanted to talk to you about some of the changes you might have noticed when you are working with Microsoft Outlook. So whether you are a fan of the classic look and you're looking at what the differences are and you're curious about it or if you're diving in and you're not 100% sure where things are and what's going on, this is the video for you. We're going to jump in and have a look at some of the difference, differences between the classic and the new version so that you can make a decision about which format is going to be best for you right now while we still have the option to be jumping around and choosing backwards and forwards. So let's have a look. So let's start with a really quick overview. The new Outlook is bringing some changes to our navigation, our search, and even the way that messages are being organized. So let's break each one down and have a look at what that actually means for you. So first, let's take a look at the new navigation panel. So you'll notice that folders and pinned items are here over on the left, and they are a little bit more streamlined than they would have been before, and you can roll them up quite easily and down. Uh, our pinned items or our favourites are up here as well, and the navigation for all of the different items that we work with over here, so email, calendar, people, groups to do, OneDrive is linked here as well, and there are more apps that you've got access to here, so you can go straight to some of the other Microsoft apps here from Outlook. So the integration that we're talking about here is, is what we start to see. The other things that you need to know about the layout and the navigation here is that our ribbon looks a little bit different. So you do have the option to customize the ribbon uh, up here. And you can do a lot here. You can add and you can group them differently. You can do all sorts of things. Uh, so you can play around with that. You can tick and untick the ones that matter to you. You can also, from the view tab here, we can choose some of our basic settings about conversations and our previews, about the layout of our view. So where the ribbon, the folder pane, the reading pane go, and the density of those um, sections. If you want to, from uh, here, you can change your view settings as well and drill right down into some of the general settings about your appearance. So we can play around with those here as well. Um, looking at things like our focused inbox, our text size, how things are organized, those sorts of things. So you've still got really good control. Uh, when we talk about the ribbon, it usually defaults to this simplified version if you like the classic ones, if we go back to the home tab, you'll see this is a little bit easier to view and you can drop it back up here to the simple version as well. So it's entirely up to you. It's just about the amount of space that it takes up. Now, next, we've also got an improved search functionality. So up the top here, when we search, you can see that instead of it simply being about the breakdown here about if you've got different mailboxes, I can be really specific. I can search in all of these or specific ones like my top 10 that I might have searched in before. But I can also, when I search here, it's going to break things down for me into all emails, files, teams, and people. So it's going to start to give me uh, the opportunity to be able to filter down. I'm looking for, let's say I was looking for something because I'm in my magic one. Let's say I'm looking for Marianne. Now, obviously, I send everything. So it, there's a lot of stuff here. But when I filter it down, you can see these are emails, these are files, these are the teams that we have, and then these are the people that are in my contacts. So I can break it down rather than having to deal with all of that stuff that would just sort of keep popping up. And lastly, we've got our message organization. So the big one here within Outlook is our just going to, so it's the option to do our focused and non -fo or focused and other folder, which is the new Outlook feature. So what that does is it puts things and it lets that, it lets Outlook start to do some of that AI work for you. Now you'll see I don't have it. So if we go into our view settings, we've got here sort messages into focused and other. So if I save this and close it. You'll see we now get this option. And what it will do, this, this inbox doesn't get used an awful lot, but what it will do then is it will allow you to prioritise important messages 
without moving them out of your inbox. They're still technically all in the inbox, but they're broken into those two categories. And over time, Outlook with its AI and its continuing kind of advances is going to start to understand the things that you prioritize over the things you don't. So again, if you're one of these people who gets a lot of noise in your inbox, this is a really great way for you to potentially be able to filter out some of that noise without losing anything. If, you, if you're worried about things going into a folder that you may not ever see. So the option there is in your view settings from the view tab up here. And I don't use it because I use rules and I use a folder structure. So that's just me. Again, it is entirely personal choice. So these tools are really, really helpful for you to be able to work with and to be able to customize the way you work in your inbox and managing that email overwhelm and that volume every day. I did wanna share as well with you a couple of updates that have happened in the calendar section of Outlook while we're focused primarily about the emails, the calendar is a really, really important part of Outlook's entire functionality. And for those of us who live and die by our calendar, the integrations that are here now are great. So there are a bunch of new scheduling options that are built in to your calendars to help you manage your meetings in a, in a more streamlined way and set up reminders, which is great if you are managing more than one calendar. So if we are creating a new event, which is what it would be called. And you can see we've got a new mail message or a new event. So a calendar item is now called an event. You can see here, I can pick which calendar it sits in. I can add a title, which we could always do. I can put a little icon on it if I want to. I can identify whether it's a Teams meeting or not. I can invite my attendees and I've still got my optional attendees. Here we've got the usual things, date and time, time zones, recordings. The interesting thing you can do here is you can, you can specify that this is an in-person event, which is something that's actually really handy if you work in a hybrid setting or you have a variety of meetings, that some are remote or online, some are in-person. So you can actually specify that it is an in-person event and it will note that then, if we tick this, it will actually note that in the appointment. So we can pop in our information here. I'll just put here that this is a test meeting for new Outlook. Um, and you can see that it's changed automatically at the top here. So if I turn that off, that will go away. So I'm going to call this one test meeting. And whoop, can't spell today, meeting. If I make that an in-person event, it's popping that in on there. So it tell it's telling people this is what if this is an in-person event in the title. So there's none of that back and forth going, oh, where's the Teams link? I can't. Perfect, right? Um, and then when we get to our formatting, there's all the usual formatting tools here, links and being able to make them quotes, etc. cetera, um, adding a hyperlink, being able to do some general formatting tools. And then we've got being able to attach the files. Now you can attach them from OneDrive, you can upload them, whatever it's going to be insert your picture. Now that's inserting a picture into the actual message. So that's that inline option. So if you were adding a GIF or a, um, a diagram or a header, that's the option you would use. Emojis and GIFs built in, really handy, although be careful in a professional setting, of course. Clearing your formatting or hiding your formatting options. I'll just get rid of that one. Uh, this one is the editor. And what this will do is this is where you're setting the rules around your spelling, your grammar, any of those other refinements that you want it to do, which is really handy because you can then specify things differently for a, a specific message as well. Uh, we've got some loop components as well. So if you're working internally in an organization, loop is still not working well with externals or guests, but internally you can create all of these things. So you can create lists and checklists and tables that sit in a loop workspace, like a Google workspace, and allow you to be working on them as live pieces. And you can create those in your events as well. Um, and then you can run a check for your accessibility. So in this day and age with us all working on screens and making sure that all of our content is inclusive, then we wanna make sure that we're, we're managing our accessibility issues. This will look at things like uh, font size, colors, uh, spacing, 
and language as well to make sure that it's a really clear and accessible uh, tool for you to or appointment for you to share out. Up the top here, we've got a few options. You can ask again for people to respond and allow them to forward. You can set whether it's going to mark them as free, out of office, whatever it would be. And then our reminders. So you can set those reminders. Now, these are the ones that pop up in the, as the little notifications, but you can also add an email reminder. And these are ones, so this is a separate email reminder that will come up. So remind me, um, and we might make it one hour before. Your test meeting is in one hour. Make sure the catering and room prep is done. Oops, can't spell again. All right, and save. And you can have multiple reminders. So we can do a few different ones. And as I'm working through these, um, I can have multiples at an hour before if I wanted to, but um, and I can do some custom ones as well so I can choose a specific date and time, which is great if you just hit uh, a dismiss on all of those notifications. This is a really handy tool. So being able to pop those in, you can edit them and change them at any point as well. Uh, you can categorise it, so adding your categories. You can mark it as private. You can actually do a scheduling poll, and this will then allow you to ask um, about time options. So that one will work. Adding a GIF. This is a link. If you want to, you can hook up your Zoom meeting. Obviously, if it was a Teams meeting, I would use Teams. Your insights. You can send it to OneNote, and you can have some templates set up as well to make your life easier. The scheduling assistant is also really handy now. We can see everybody if they're um, on our system. We can have a look at all of those and be looking at what's happening and who's available so we can see that this is going to work. So the new Outlook gives us some of these great features that the classic Outlook doesn't offer us at the moment. Those haven't been rolled out into the classic. They're all being pushed into the new. If you are hesitant about making the change to the new Outlook, then hopefully some of these tips about how you can customise and tailor the look to suit something that's going to feel more familiar for you will make that transition a little bit easier. I will put my hand up and say there are features that are not available in the new Outlook that I rely on quite heavily at the moment, particularly when it comes to exporting and archiving Outlook folders and content as PST files. That is not available in the classic, in the new Outlook. You still need to be in the classic one. Now you can move backwards and forwards at the moment between the two to help you kind of figure out which bits are missing, what works for you and what doesn't. But eventually the transition will be across permanently and you won't be able to go back. So it's definitely worth getting in there and starting to get comfortable with what's possible and what those new features are so that you can start maneuvering the way that you manage your inbox that's going to be more in line with that new look when we eventually all have to make the permanent switch across. I hope that this has been really helpful for you. If you have any comments or questions about working with the new Outlook, make sure you pop them on this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and I would love to have you subscribe to the channel so you can get more great tips on working with Outlook here from Thrive. Cheers.